In most modern web applications, there is a high likelihood that you'll probably be making API requests to feed some data into your UI. With Nux3, this is also possible. And Nux3 provides a simple and elegant solution to deal with loading times and pending states and errors in your application. So today we're going to look at the difference between use async data and use lazy async data, some of its options and what the difference is. Before we get started, let's define a simple API uh, endpoint in our Nux3 application. And in Nux3, that is pretty simple. All you have to do is define a server folder and inside the server folder, create another directory called API. And then in this API directory, you can create a post.ts that will define your endpoint as a request handler. So in this file, we'll define some posts and when the request comes in, we'll just respond with these posts. But before we respond with the posts, all we want to do is just sleep the server for a little bit by using this nifty little async set timeout and the server will wait about 2.5 seconds before responding with the data. And this will help us see the difference between use async data and use lazy async data. So back in our Nux3 application, we have a pages folder and inside pages we have an index and an about. In the index file, we'll be defining a script setup and a template which is just the standard Nux syntax. So let's start off with use async data. In Nux, you can define this function globally. It has a compile time definition, so you don't need to import use async data. You can just call it in the setup script. So use async data returns an object that has a data pending and error response. The pending response we'll look at in a little while when we go to the about page. But for now, let's define this use async data function and we can use the handler as the second property. The first property would be a key that they use to deduplicate requests. And in the handler function, all we'll do is return the promise of the fetch call to our API endpoint, which will return posts. There are also some options that you can specify in use async data. One of them is lazy, but we won't make this true for now because this is actually what use lazy async data does. It just wraps around use async data with the lazy property of true. And we can also define other keys like server and some other ones, but you can go have a look at the docs if you want to see some options to your use async data request. One of my favorite ones is the pick option. So if you request a huge object, like let's say for instance, a Google Sheets request, you can easily pick off some properties by just using the pick key. So let's make this request and in our template we'll define a simple UL with some list items. And in these list items we'll loop over the response from the API and we'll show all the titles of the post. Now let's refresh the browser and see what happens. As soon as we load, it takes about 2.5 seconds for anything to appear on the screen. This is because use async data is being called on the server and that can be changed by modifying the server true or false property in the use async data. But since we're running it on the server, it just makes sense that the page doesn't load until the data has been server generated. And now to illustrate the difference between use async data and use lazy async data in the about page, we can do exactly the same thing, except we define use async data as use lazy async data. And this time we really need to care about the pending property that it returns. Because what use lazy async data does is it'll immediately render the page, even on the client side route. So let's do some Nuxt links on home and about and then toggle between these. And let's refresh the about page and the behavior should be pretty much similar to the home page. But the difference comes in when we click on the home link on the about page. You'll see that it takes about 2.5 seconds for anything to change. But if you look at the URL, that actually updates. So what's happening is that Nuxt isn't gonna render the page until the request is fully completed. And this can cause some friction for your users. So a better option would be to do it as you do it from the home to the about page. As soon as we click it, we see the about page. So at least there's something on the page for the user to see. Hopefully your APIs don't take 2.5 seconds, but this is just for illustration. And that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. It really helps out the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys next time.